Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Um, Thank you. Thank you. I receive that in Jesus' name. Um, hallelujah. God's good. Anybody have a praise report, testimony, something good about God? God is faithful. God is on time. God is merciful. God is in prayer. How about a prayer? Anybody have a prayer request? No? Trying to That's good. God is good. That is right. Um, He's our Savior and our healer. Our Savior and healer. That he is. Um, I don't think I have any prayer requests either. So we'll just, um, it's okay. We'll just close our eyes for a few moments. Just, if you want to lift your hands, feel free to lift your hands. If you want to lift your voice, just lift your voice and praise the Lord and magnify him. Lord, so we bless you tonight. We appreciate you, Lord. You are faithful, God. We thank you, Lord, for filling me with your spirit. I thank you, Father, for washing me with the water of the word of God. I thank you, Lord, that your name is above every other name. And everything is under your feet tonight, Lord. You rule and reign with such great power and authority, Lord, that there is nothing that happens that you are not aware of. There is nothing that happens that you have not allowed. You have not put your limitations on tonight. I give you thanks, Lord. I bless you tonight. I appreciate you, Father. You are wonderful, God. Thank you, Lord, for being a prayer answering God. Thank you, Lord, for being our healer and our Savior. I'm grateful to you tonight, Lord. Thank you, Father, for covering me with your blood. I thank you, Jesus, for your word that is alive. I thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for speaking to us, Father. Thank you for dealing with us, Lord. We ask that you administer in this house. You administer to those that are viewing this tonight with us in Jesus' name, those that are gathering together in unity with you, Father, in prayer. By your spirit tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would speak to us, Father, that you would deal with us, O oh Lord. Would you minister your word to us tonight, Lord, and help us, Lord, plow the hollow ground of our hearts and of our minds. And I pray for your word to find that that seed of the word of God would find that good ground, that it would find that good soil, Father, that it would take root there, Father, and that it would bear good fruit within us. So I ask that you would search us, Lord, tonight, would you cleanse us and wash us, Lord, of every unclean thing, of every evil deed, of every evil word of every evil thought, imagination, and idea. Father, would you forgive me of the sin in my life? Would you forgive me of iniquity and idolatry? I ask, Lord, by your grace, that you would empower us, Father, to have the to be able to forgive you other than ourselves. We lose faith right now, faith for the impossible, faith for the miraculous. And we ask, Lord, that you would unstop our ears, that we would hear your voice as you speak to us, Lord, and that we would accept your word, Father, that we would apply to our lives. And help us, Lord, that we would lean on you and trust in you, Father, for all things, that we come and cast our cares upon you tonight, Lord, and we lose faith once again in Jesus' name. Faith, Lord, for your, uh, the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, Father. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. I do have a yes, sir. Praise report. Praise report. All right. So about two weeks late. Two so weeks late. Well, that's that's okay. But I have had the osteoporosis since nineteen. Yeah. 
it's still healing. God is still doing the miraculous. Right. So thank you, Father, for that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So we're um, talking about goodness. Still in the Christian character Bible study, the fruit of the Spirit. And um, you know what? Let me just start with that scripture that we usually start off with. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And like I said, we're talking a little bit more about goodness. And so tonight we're going to start with how goodness is expressed. The only way that we can hope to manifest goodness in our life is to first of all allow God to manifest it in us. So, you know, it's that, once again, everything, our intimate relationship with Him, our, our life of prayer um, is so important to where God has the, He has that chance to man manifest those things within us. He has that chance to instill, instill different things within us. I'm always asking, asking, Lord, would you instill within me the purity of Christ? Instill within me the honesty and the integrity of Christ? And we, when we spend that time with Him, He has that chance to manifest that goodness within us, you know, this happens when we, first of all, when we're obeying His Word. We obey the Word of God, we submit ourselves to Him, we yield to His Spirit, and we live according to His will. So, you know, you know, obedience, submit ourselves, uh, you know, surrendering to the will of God, and, you know, not conforming to the different things in this world, and, but conforming to the will of God. And goodness is a progression of purity that begins... In your inner man, and then manifest itself toward God and toward our fellow man. And you know, once again, that's we always, I always talk about it to where we all we're always going to have those opportunities to where we have a chance to um, allow that uh, the goodness, allow the fruit of the Spirit to be manifest in our lives, but also into the lives of those around us. To where you know, how are we living? How am I living? How how am I walking? And how am I talking? What are, what are the things that I'm doing? And hopefully it is, you know, showing the goodness of God and showing the, the greatness of God. So this is what uh, the word, the word, this is what the word refers to as good works or the expression of goodness. And in Matthew 5 and 16, uh, just read that real quick, Matthew 5 and 16, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Once again, he's, we're to be that vessel, we're to be that instrument, that tool that he's going to use for his light to shine in this dark world. If a man is truly good on the inside, he will seek to express that goodness outwardly. Doing so is a witness to his faith in God, right? So we, um, you know, I have faith in God and I want to, you know, I have faith that he's manifesting the, the different aspects of the fruit of the Spirit in my life. And once again, I'm going to have those chances for that uh, fruit of the Spirit to be at work in my life. It's gonna, I'm going to have that chance for it to be out, outwardly known to others around me. Um, and in that, I'm showing my faith in God. James, James says, if a man professes that faith but does not express it, then his faith is a dead faith. James 2 and 20 reads in the King James Version, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Matthew 12 and 35 reads, A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. So, and that's, you know, part of our prayer lives too, to where, you know, Lord, create within me a clean heart. Restore within me a right spirit. You know, and hopefully the closer I am to Him, the closer I am to my heavenly, you know, I, speaking of your, our relationship with our earthly Father, just maybe, you know, maybe somewhere close to on earth, we start resembling maybe some of their character and some of their nature. We hang around, you know, I remember being younger and, you know, hanging around with this one, one of my friends, my best friend, all the time. You know, day and night, we were, we were either at his house or we were at my house, you know, we were always getting, you know, this and that. And, but I, I need to be like that with my heavenly father. And I need to spend, I need to spend all the time that I can with him to where I start becoming more like him. I start taking on his character. I start having that nature of Christ and the character of Christ. And that, once again, that honesty and that integrity and that purity of Christ 
to where, you know, a good man out of the good treasure of my heart, I'll bring him forth good things to where, you know, I'm getting the goodness of him, and he's manifesting his goodness within me. If the heart is not good, then no, or, um, if the heart is not good, then no good will come from forth in the life. If I've got a, a clean or an unclean heart, if I've got an evil heart, if I just continually have those evil thoughts, and you know, I'm not asking God to forgive me, and I'm not asking Him to wash me and cleanse me and renew within me a right spirit and create within me a clean heart, and, you know, that's what's going to come out. That's what people are going to see then. How is something good going to be able to come out of that? And God help us, you know, those times where we. Where we're struggling and we're, you know, maybe lacking in our prayer lives and we, you know, go out into the world and sometimes people see that other, other side of us, you know, and we, you know, we, then we've got to make it right, hopefully, you know, and say, you know, yeah, sometimes that is that, uh, that nasty man must have just show his face too much, I guess. Yeah, sometimes it's, it's hard to do, like, uh, sometimes it is. And sometimes you don't, you might not even have the chance, you know. Or because maybe you don't run into that person again, or maybe it's that that person just doesn't want you to make it right, too. Um, yes. So James 3, 11 through 12, it says, Does the fountain send forth in the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brother, bear all of the berries? Either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. It's the same old adage, garbage in and garbage out. And that's, you know, that is so true. You know, what we're spending our time, you know, watching, listening to. Um, and I know some of it we can't, we don't have any control over. Some of the stuff is just out in the world where, you know, it's just right out there. We just can't control it. But, you know, we can get a hold of it pretty quickly. And, you know, whether we got to ask forgiveness or, you know, Lord, wash me, cleanse me, you know. Help me to see only those things you want me to see, Father, in the name of Jesus. And help me to focus on those things that are pure, those things that are true, those things that are lovely. Um, so we're not focusing on that garbage. And, and another thing, too, you know, we, yeah, we really need to limit our, our control, you know, the things as best, best we can the garbage that, you know, sometimes we just ourselves to take in. Uh, the philosophy of the world is to do whatever pleases yourself and don't worry about the other guy. And that is so true in this world today. It's just do whatever you gotta do to make yourself happy, do whatever you gotta do to you know please yourself. Well, if and it feels good, do it. it. Right, if it feels good, yeah. And who cares about what anybody else thinks? I mean, I don't know. If you're hurt, even if you're hurting somebody else. But you're right, brother. Goodness, according to the word, will always consider others first. Philippians 2, 3 through 4. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Galatians 6 and 2. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. So bear one another's burdens with... Uh, So, you know, that's talking about, like, bearing someone else's burdens. It's like just taking that burden that they have and, and putting it on yourself. You know, we um, talk about a burden for prayer, a burden for the lost. You know, and that's, you know, you might have a burden for your brother or sister or for a spouse or for, you know, a family member or a neighbor or a co-worker or something like that. To where we can take the, we can take these different things on. Whether it be in the physical, we're helping somebody physically, or maybe it's something we're going to take on and help them. In, in, in prayer, you know, like, hey, I'm gonna, I, you know, I know you got this heavy burden, and I want to help you. I want to pray with you. I want to pray, pray for you. We'll take care of this thing in, in prayer. Um, and there was an author, I don't know what he wrote, Leo Viscaglia. Uh, he said that too often we underestimate the power of a touch, a smile, a kind word, a listening ear. An honest compliment or the smallest act of caring, all of which have the potential to turn a life around. And that is so true. You know, just sometimes we, you know, somebody just wants us to be there to be able to listen, 
I don't, you know, we, they might not uh, want us to give any answers or anything like that. They just want to be able to vent. You know, there's times where I just want to vent. Anybody can just want to just get some things off just so you can just kind of ah, just let it out there. Um, and sometimes that might help us to where we don't attack somebody else, but we just need somebody that we, somebody that we can con- or confide in, somebody that we can vent to, and just, you know, not to where we're turning into a gossip session even, but I mean, there can be a healthy way of, you know, getting some things off. First of all, I mean, we can go to the Lord with everything anyways. I mean, we don't actually have to have somebody, but we can take everything to prayer. Father, well, you know I'm struggling with this, you know I have, I'm having a hard time with this situation, this, this individual, um, you know, take this hatred, you know, maybe we're having, maybe we have some hatred, you know, the Lord can take that from us. Uh, amen. Um, a smile, just sometimes a smile, smile to somebody. I mean, there's so many mean faces out in the world today. Just sometimes a smile, a nice gesture, uh, a kind word, an honest compliment, smallest act of, of caring. There are biblical precepts that guide us in expressing goodness. We were created to manifest the ways of God through good works in the world. Ephesians 2 and 10, it says that... Uh, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we're created in his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And once again, it's that, you know, hopefully the things that I'm doing, hopefully hopefully the things that I'm uh, allowing things to be manifest because of what I'm, you know, saying, doing, the way that I'm living, it's, it's helping someone to be saved. You know, it's reaching someone's, uh, it's reaching a soul, and uh, hopefully, you know, there's salvation, you know, they can be saved through it. When we do good, we are expressing to the world that we are of God. And that's, once again, you know, there's nothing good within me. The only thing good about me is that I have God. I have a relationship with God. I have the gift of the Holy Ghost. I have, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. I have... The love of God, first of all, that perfect love. Um, scripture also says, Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. And once again, people are going to know, you know, we can say we're Christ, we, we can say we're Christians all day long, but if we don't spend time with Him, if we don't spend time with His Word, if, we, if we're not spending time doing like we first read when we first started, uh, obeying his word, submitting to him, yielding to his spirit, living according to his will, you know, yielding to his spirit. How many times have we, you know, the Lord, we felt we've been nudged by the Lord with that still small voice to where, hey, go, have to give a kind of word, go share the love of God with this so-and-so here in front of you, or, you know, many times to where we Sometimes, a lot of times we've punched it. Right. And sometimes we've actually acted. You know, uh, and people are going to notice that. People, are, that's how people are going to notice if, if we're Christians or we're Christ-like. To where, are, you know, is, are these things being manifest? Those kind words, the love of God. Sometimes you yeah, actually say, "Lord, is it you that tell me to do that, or it's just me thinking?" Right. So, so exactly. So you wait a minute. Reads, his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the, thy Lord. He also hath he also that had received two talents came and said, that Lord, thou deliverest me, deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. And you know, that is so awesome to where, you know, the joy that we do receive when we do bless somebody, when we, when we do uh, share a kind word or we do share the love of God with somebody in, and that joy that we do receive in that I'm not saying that that should be what, why we're doing it but um, the joy of the Lord is a good thing yes, it is. Uh, there was one man that said he had, he had this rule for his life he said do all the good you can by, by all the means you can in all the ways you can, in all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. So, you know we have the chance. We have the opportunity. But once again, we, God forgive us, we judge at times. We judge the way people look. We judge, I don't know, social, financial status at times. We judge, you know, how we... Uh, have been treated by others to where the Lord, I mean, we're supposed to treat everybody with the love of God and with the kind of the goodness, the goodness of God. We express goodness by helping those in need. And once again, that's where we, you know, sometimes we're, it's those situations where we, you know, we really got to listen for the voice of the Lord. Because uh, there's some people out there who are just trying to raw, you know, get away with things where you know, you're trying to help somebody and they're just trying to, you know, steal, if I can say it like that, because that's what they're doing. But then there's all, all those times where we have that on the back of our mind, and then somebody's really in need, and then we're like, we, we choose to hold back. Because we're like, ah, no, I remember this last time when I took groceries to this person on the corner, and they got so offended. Shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee uh, a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brother, ye have done it unto me. The story of the Good Samaritan is a prime example of manifested goodness. The Good Samaritan, you know the good story of the Good Samaritan, right? Uh, that's in Luke chapter 10, verse 33 to 35. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And that's what we lack so much. We lack the compassion of Christ. I mean, we really do. He had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. He took the time to recognize the need. Second, he bound up his wounds. Third, he took him to a safe place. He provided for his care, and he was willing to do even more. And, you know, and I'm guilty. God help me. I mean, God help me because we get called upon, we feel 
feel like we get nudged by the Lord to just do step out and take care of one of these steps. And we feel like we're overburdened or overwhelmed or whatever it might be, or I don't, you know, God help us. We express goodness when we love our enemies. Romans 12, 20 through 21, it says, Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. <laughs> okay, right there we already have problems. Because <laughs> we're we're talking about our enemy, and I need to feed my enemy. I need to take care of my enemy. If he thirsts, give him drink. And I love our first thought is, you know, let him go thirsty. You know, let him thirst. Let him go hungry. That's my enemy. God help us. That's not the way that Jesus wants us to act. That's not the way he wants us to live. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil. But overcome evil with good, and how, that's how we're supposed. To, that's how we're going to win people's hearts. You know, that's how, first of all, we're not doing it. It's Him working in us and through us, where He's winning. He's He's changing the hearts and minds of men by using this instrument, by using this vessel. You know, and He can use us because hopefully we spent that time in prayer to where I poured out. You know, you know, God bless you. So when we poured out of ourselves, when we've emptied ourselves, and then he had that chance to fill us up with all of him and all of his goodness and the fruit of the Spirit and the love of God and the, the gentleness and the compassion of Christ and the, the honesty and the integrity and the purity. And now we can be used to overcome evil with this good, the goodness of Christ that's in, dwelling within us. But we don't... That's not the first thing, you know, we hear something about our enemy, enemy that's not the first thing that's on our mind. We're, we're, you know, we're ready, you know, you hear enemy, we're ready to <laughs> put on your full armor. Put on your full armor. <laughs> and lay hands repeatedly, but not in that, uh, not at the altar, right? Yeah. To where, where? Yeah, he's the sword of the spirit. <laughs> Thank the sword. <laughs> But it says, be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcome evil with good. Matthew 5 and 44, it reads, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Love your enemies, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. These scriptures are really hitting home tonight, huh? Yeah, they are. Hitting us right in our living room. <laughs> Luke 6, 28-30. Once again, bless them that curse you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. And you know what? And that's how we can overcome that. Any, well, once again, is how we're going to overcome any hatred or any bitterness or ill feelings that we have towards our enemy in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you and I say, once again, what do we say? I've got to obey the word of God. I've got to submit to him. I've got to yield to his spirit. I've got to live according to his will. And once again, whatever they're doing, the evil that they're doing to me, me blessing them, me providing for them, me taking care of their hunger and thirst isn't saying whatever that they're doing, that their evil is right. No, it's not saying that. It's saying that the goodness of God in me is greater than this, and we can overcome, you know, to where they can even be delivered, to where they can be saved, to where, you know, hopefully all that goodness, and hopefully we can sustain, you know, what we can in Him, because once again, His grace is sufficient to where we can overcome. It's telling us to overcome evil, not to be overcome with the evil. So it, we might, we might, to where we. We finally give in and we yield to this and we're like, okay, God, we're gonna, I'm gonna bless my enemy. I'm gonna, he's hungry, I'm gonna go give him food. I'm gonna take care of that hunger. Oh, he's thirsty, I'm gonna take care of that thirst. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna pray for him, I'm gonna bless him, I'm not gonna curse my enemy, and it might even get worse. And then God's like, you know what, hold on. Stand fast, you know, here. Sustain, let's just persevere a little bit longer. Don't be overcome by that evil. Let's overcome this evil. Thank God that He, you know, He's there with us every step of the way. We've just got to lean on Him, right? right? Thank God for that. 
because there are those times when we're doing that and we're just like, I just, I don't know. I don't know if I can go another minute. I don't know if I can go another day. I don't know if I can, you know, keep on this path of blessing my enemy right here. I want to, I want to start hating like they're hating me. Guilty, right? Yeah. He's like, that's not what's going to overcome me. That's just going to make things worse. You know. And we're like, well, it just seems like it gotten worse. That's why I started showing the goodness. Got to press on. Who uh, knows if you pray for him and he may uh, get saved and become your best friend. There you go. Yeah, you might, that might be your best friend that the Lord's trying to bless you with. Uh, and you might two might become the best prayer warriors and intercessors together, and to where you know that might be your uh, brother in arms to where you're, you know, praise God. So we have blessed them that curse you, pray for them which despitefully use you, and unto him that smited thee on the one cheek also offer also the other. <laughs> That's not an easy thing to do there either. Yep. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. That's hard to do. Yes, sir. Somebody who steals from you. Yeah. Right. We what our first thing is justice. Something's got to be done. This wrong has to be made right. And I don't see that anywhere here. <laughs> the Lord's not concerned too much with that. It doesn't seem like to me. I mean, by just these couple scriptures here. I mean, His concern to me is that once again that overcome evil with good. Luke 6, 31 through 33, and as you would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Not do to them what they're doing to you, but what would you would like them to do unto you. I mean, for if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. Thank you, Father, for your word. <laughs> Thank you, Father, God, for your ministry. Praise God. This wasn't as long as I thought it was going to take. Um, with the closing illustration, there's a story that comes from long ago of a king who organized a great race within his kingdom. All the young men of the kingdom participated. A bag of gold was to be given to the winner. And the finish line was within the courtyard of the king's palace. I would, I'd like to have a bag of gold. I thought, brother. <laughs> the race was run, and the runners were su surprised to find in the middle of the road leading to the king's palace a great pile of rocks and stones. But they managed to scramble over it or to run around it and eventually come to the courtyard. Finally, all the runners had crossed the finish line except one. But still, the king did not call the race off. After a while, one lone runner came through the gate. He lifted a bleeding hand and said, O oh, king, I am sorry that I am so late. But you see, I found in the pile of rocks and stones, I found in the pile of rocks and stones, and it took me a while, and I wounded myself in removing them. Then he lifted the other hand. And then it was a bag. He said, but great king, I found beneath the pile of rocks this bag of gold. The king said, my son, you have won the race for that the one run, for that one run the best who makes the way safer for those who follow. So it kind of just takes us to me, it takes me to that thought of, you know, praying for your enemy, blessing your enemy, taking care of your enemy to where instead of going around and we're trying to get out of the situation or Lord deliver me from this to where, you know, like this runner was taking and removing all the rocks and the stones and all the rubble and got to the gold underneath all that, that person, right, that we're, you know, the Lord's got it right in our path for a reason <laughs> to where we can, by his goodness, so we can overcome that evil once again, it's that, that removing of the rocks and the rubble to where now, once again, you know, we become friends or whatever it might be, or, or prayer warriors together, or, or just.
it's their salvation. Um, so, yeah. Help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I think we have just a couple more. Just a few more. Uh, I think this goes up to Lesson 8 is next, so that's faithful to the end. And I think it goes up to Lesson 10. Less than 10 will be the last one. So, um, but God is good. Help us, Lord, because I know in talking through this and reading over it and uh, sharing it tonight to where it's, I need help. <laughs> I need a lot of help, Lord. Um, he's here to do that. He's here for us. Uh, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bless you tonight. We exalt you and magnify your wonderful name. Thank you, Lord, for not leaving us. I thank you, Father, that you have not given up on us. We ask, Lord, that you would um, bless us tonight. Help us to be a blessing to those that we come in contact with. Help us to be a blessing to those that we face, with, to those enemies even at different times that we encounter. Lord, that we would overcome all of that evil with the goodness of God that is manifest in us in Jesus. And I pray that we would recognize those chances and every opportunity, Father, for these uh, open doors, if you will, Father, for the, every aspect of the fruit of the Spirit to be at work in our lives and, and to be made manifest into the lives of those that we come in contact with, Father. That they would see our good works, Lord, and that they would choose to glorify our Father, which is in heaven, in the wonderful name of Jesus. We ask, Father, that you would order our steps according to your word. Help us, Father, that we would obey your word. Help us, Father, that we would submit ourselves to your spirit, that we would yield ourselves to you, Lord, and that we would humble ourselves before you, Lord, and that we would surrender our will on a daily basis, Lord, and that we would conform to the perfect will of God. In the name of Jesus, we bless you tonight, Father, we exalt you. And I pray, Father, for the fruit of the spirit to be manifest in all the earth and the body of Christ. We pray for the gifts of the Spirit to be manifest in all the earth and the body of Christ. And help us, Lord, that, that the scales would fall from our eyes, Lord, and that we would walk by faith and not by sight. And that we would see things through the eyes of God. And then help us, Father, that we would be filled with the compassion of Christ. That we would have compassion, Father, as you have compassion on this dying world. That we would have compassion on those souls that you put in front of us each day, Lord. And that we would share the things of God. That we would share the goodness of God. That we would share, hallelujah, without holding back, Father, the, the love of God and the word of God. In the name of Jesus. And we ask that you would bless these different ministries, Father, that we are part of and involved in. That these ministries would be successful, Father, in sharing the word and the love of God. That these ministries would be successful, Father, in discipling new converts and new babies in the Lord. In the wonderful name of Jesus. Praise be unto God. Glory to God. And I want to thank you tonight for the healing that you're doing in our brother tonight. Lord, I want to praise you and I want to bless you. And I, I have faith for my own healing in my body tonight, Lord. And I have faith for the healing in the name of Jesus of those that are part of the Rock Church, those that are viewing right now. I have faith for your healing. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we bless you tonight. We exalt you tonight, Lord. You are worthy, God. You are holy, Lord. You are perfect, God. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. I do have. Amen. I do have. Wow.